Welcome guys to another video, it's me Evelyn. Today I want to talk about the craftable weapons in Genshin Impact and how to obtain all of them. So I use the site GenshinImpactFandom.com. Here we have a list of all the forgeable weapons and some of them are available from the start and for some of them you still have to find the corresponding diagrams in the first place to be able to craft them um, and therefore we will have a look at them and I will tell you right away where to find them, should you still miss one of them. And while we are at it, I will also um, give you some information to every weapon as far as my knowledge goes. So let's have a look at the White Blind. The White Blind is the only weapon with defense as a main stat. It fits perfectly on well. Then the Crescent Pike is a weapon for physical damage output, like for a physical DPS. You could slap it on Rosaria or Shangling. Shang Ling is very good as a physical DPS, physical carry in the national team, for example. Check that team combo out if you didn't heard that term by now. Um, a very effective team in the early game if you get uh, if you got the characters. And then it's worth to build them just to carry you through the abyss early on. But next sword, the prototype Rancor. The prototype Rancor is a weapon you get with AR-10 and it's also physically damage output. Yeah, probably it's the only force weapon you have in the beginning. I don't have a long-term use for this one, okay? It's the only thing I want to tell you. Um, maybe don't level it up all the way to level 90, but it's up to you. Maybe you just have unlucky drops and you don't have any other choice. Um, then the compound bow, physical damage bonus. So the compound bow would be something for official, and you get it right from the start. You can craft this thing. Then the map of mare. <laughs> um, it has elemental mastery on it, so it would be a decent choice for uh, elemental mastery buffing sucrose but there is also a, a three star weapon alternative so also have a look at the three star weapons if it's for sucrose from the stellar reunion event actually that's when you didn't log in for 14 days this will trigger and if you then log in you get some nice login bonuses for returning players and stuff and then the next one prototype amber prototype amber is also available right from the start and his main stat is HP, maybe on a healing Barbara, if you are about to build a Barbara. Then the prototype Hake, also a standard weapon. It got attack as a main stat, attack percentage. Uh, so it's a pretty decent sword. Also his special effect triggers like an explosion, 15 seconds. And it's a pretty heavy explosion, so a decent sword. Then the Iron Sting, I guess the Iron Sting is, and for a long time will be the best sword on Kazuha even refining it would give more damage output. But to be honest, I left it at R1 because I mostly use my Kazuha for elemental mastery buff and I don't want him to deal the most damage. So I'm okay with the Iron Sting at refinement rank one. And the Iron Sting is also available right from the start. No limitations. Then the Snow Tomb Star Silver. That's a Claymore that's basically made for Eula from a design perspective, I would say. Like, I mean, look at it. It's, it's blue, it's shimmering, it's beautiful. And it has physical damage as a main stat. For the Snow Tomb Star Silver, you will need to collect three boxes. Like, one is called Princess Box, and it's located here. So here's the first picture where the um, Princess Box, how it's called, is. But be aware the fight is pretty hard. Just so be warned, okay? Then the next box would be the priest's box. And this one is located here. Yeah, I would start over there, glide over this broken bridge and get it. It's here in this corner. And you need to grab all those boxes just to open this one room where the snow tomb star silver is. Um, the next one uh, and the last one is in front of the star glow cavern. That's actually pretty easy to find. It's, it's really obvious, this little tombstone here. In the end, after you got all those boxes, you can open this one big door. Here's the secret room where you need the three boxes to open the door. And behind the door, you will get the Snow Tomb Star Silver. So I hope I didn't spoil you here and you saw this afterwards. Like after you completed Dragon Spine and thought you were already done. I hope you that's when you watch this video. I hope I didn't spoil you here, but that's the whole meaning of this video to tell you guys how to obtain this stuff. Okay, yeah, in there are torches, light them up and you will get the sword. It looks just awesome, this whole scenery in there. Um, let's get back to the weapons though. Okay, 
So we stopped here at Snowdon Star Table. That was pretty complicated to obtain. Then the Dragon Spine Spear. Um, this one get uh, you can obtain after completing a world quest. It's called the Festering Fang. And yeah, that's a world quest. I think it starts east to, of Dragon Spine. I forgot. The Dragon Spine Spear is a physically damaged spear, but I think the community agrees that the Crescent Pike is still better. But of course it looks different. And test is one effect that the icicle drops from above. It's basically the same effect as with the Snow Tomb Star Silver, but the Dragon Spine Spear is just not as good as the Crescent Pike overall. Then the Frost Bearer, this is a catalyst you can obtain after leveling up the tree in Dragon Spine. Then the Prototype Star Glitter, a pretty decent weapon for support units because it has energy recharge, but it's one of the starter weapons, so you can get it whenever you want. Same for the Prototype Crescent. The Prototype Crescent is one of the best free to play bows for Ganyu. Um, the thing is, its special effect is that you need to hit weak spots to get an increased attack for the next 10 seconds. I think that that's what it says. So you need to hit weak spots. Some enemies don't even have weak spots. But it's a good free-to-play bow for Ganyu. It's even, at R5, it's even more damaging than 5-star weapons at R1 on Ganyu. Or generally. But just know that. Then the Hakushin Ring. This is a weapon from the new Inazuma region. And yeah, since this is from Inazuma, you need to be done with the quest. That's the Sakura cleansing ritual, or it's at least part of it, with Kazari. Then you will get the Hakushin ring. Um, there's a limited use for this one though, but I wouldn't say it's bad right away. There is definitely a use for it, maybe not on every character. And it has something to do with Electro. Let's have a quick look. Um, yeah, it's about electro elemental reactions. If you're running a melt team and you don't even have electro reactions, there's no use for this. But if you play with Baal, with, with Raiden, why not? I guess if you slap this on Sucros, could be good. Then, the Amin Aminoma Kaguchi. Aminoma Kaguchi. Holy. Regarding this sword, you want to initiate this whole quest line that rewards you with the, uh, with the sword through this Simon Katsumi. In Kondo Village, there is a board where you will get information of a missing person. And if you start the quest line there, the characters um, react in a different way to you. You could, you could also initiate the quest just by talking to this guy. Just go to this island here and go to the highest point. Then you will find him locked in his cage, okay? After the quest, you will get the Aminoma Kageuchi. Then the next weapon on our list is the Kitain Cross Spear. To get this spear, you need to um, complete the whole Orabashi questline. I think it's six, part of, uh, six parts of this whole questline. And you will get this after, I think, the fifth. In this questline, you will get the Kitain Cross Spear. So you can't miss this one. Then the Katsuragi Kiri Nagamasa. This is a claymore that's pretty good on Beidou. Um, and it's obtainable by just finding three keys and opening a secret cave, uh, a door to a secret cave at the Mikage Furnace. Let me show you this real quick. If I remind it correctly, it should be pretty easy to find. It seems like I even marked it, or it's just the artifacts. But here, where I made this artifact marker, or let it be flower <laughs> marker, whatever. For me, it's artifact. Here is the first key. You need three keys to some place, okay? That's what they are called. And here is one. The next one is over there in a tower where you need an electrogranum to access it. Next one should be here on the roof of a house, right? next to the furnace. But to complete this, or even have access to this area, you need to complete a few quests first, so you even can access the area, and then you need to start uh, the Tatara Tales quest line, that's like also a split in seven different parts, um, and you get one quest each day. And after a while, you have unlocked all the areas where you can get the keys and open the door. The door should be here, yeah. That's... If you go along the, the lowest area here, you will find the entrance to a cave. And there, if you have all the keys already, you can open the door and get some nice rewards. And one of them is this great claymore. Then the Hamayumi bow. Oh boy. 
uh, someone gives it to you actually. And that's over here. Here you can see a small little hut and there's a guy in it. Um, the Hamayumi bow is obtainable if you give this guy in here three mysterious conches a day, okay? There is a guy who wants you to pick up three conches lying around the beach there and give them uh, to him once a day. And if you do that for a week, I'm not sure if it's exactly seven days, but you will get in the end the Hamayumi diagram because you can then choose a chest because he has like three chests to choose from. Uh, I'm not sure if you have the chance to get it earlier or if it's just after the seventh time, but you will get the Hamayumi diagram in the end, okay? Then you can craft the bow. It's a pretty decent bow. Yeah, decide for yourself. I think Hamayumi is pretty good if you play a Melt Ganyu, but yeah, let's not only talk about Ganyu. And yeah, that's actually it. Those were all the, the weapons you can get. Um, most of them are available from the start right away, but the ones here from Inazuma, you need to work a bit. Of course, how could I forget? The best weapon for Xiangling is the catch, because it's displayed here. Um, the catch is not forgeable, but it's obtainable by fishing. You need to fish like 400 fish <laughs> over the next few days and weeks, and also the right fishes, so you can buy the catch with fish. This woman is over here. Inazuma Fishing Association, it's called. And yeah, this woman will sell you the catch and also its uh, refinement materials. And it's just needs, it, it just takes a lot of time to get done with it. Okay, that's the video. Um, as you guys can see, I have 26 resin. I will spend that right away to maybe finally get the drops I need. And yeah, guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you know now everything you need to get the rest of the weapons you're still missing. Don't forget, I'm streaming on Twitch and YouTube almost daily. So maybe you want to check that out or just go over there right away and leave me a follow so you know when I go live. And you can ask me all the questions you want during the live stream. I'm happy to answer all the questions and help out beginners whenever I can. Also, feel free to leave a like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. I will you not.